Wednesday, a week ago, um, and as some of you may know, we meet for 120 days, so we have until May to finish all of our uh, business, um, and so we've been working, we're starting to introduce legislation. Um, I actually, in November, I believe it was November, was elected the minority leader in the House, so um, thank you. Unfortunately, I had to leave the Joint Budget Committee where I sat for three years, but at least we still have Senator Stedman from Denver on the Joint Budget Committee. Um, and so, you know, I've been trying to take a bigger picture, get my new role for the caucus, and been traveling the state talking about what the House Democratic agenda is. So I'm going to quickly try and run through the House Democratic agenda and then talk about what bills I'm personally working on, then I'll hand it off to the senators. Um, so. If I gave my opening day speech uh, on Wednesday and I really talked about what our agenda was, and I'll just run through real quick. Uh, the first thing is we hear a lot down there, given the election year, given the contention around the new districts, that it's going to be the most partisan session, it's going to be a bloodbath, a brawl. Um, it's all within our control as legislators how partisan we make it. And as I said, we, Democrats aren't going to be partisan. We're going to try and be partners to find solutions. So we're going to continue to do that. We've already been reaching out to the Republicans. Um, we've actually had some really good conversations and hopefully we can actually have a, a very productive session. So that being said, what are we going to work on? Uh, first thing is when we talk to our constituents is you know, jobs in the economy. We are starting to see some signs of a recovery taking hold. And it's you know consistent that we're seeing that, but it's not fast enough. There's still people struggling, and we need to make sure people who want a job or want to get a better job have those opportunities. Um, so we introduced a series of bills. Uh, one that's a Senate bill, Senate Bill 1, called the Higher Colorado Act, which would say that when we're doing government contracts, that you would give preference to state worker, any company that hired Colorado workers. So while it might cost a little more in what we're paying, we're going to actually save money in terms of unemployment insurance and actually get more money coming in from tax revenue because of the income tax people are getting that otherwise would go overseas or to other states. So that's one of the bills. The other one is around this concept of startup Colorado. Really, Colorado is the second or third, depending upon where you rank it, most educated state in the country. We have a lot of entrepreneurs and trying to build on that talent uh, and trying to encourage people. There have been a lot of people who have been uh, unemployed who are trying to start their own businesses. So trying to give them those assistance through putting investments in small business development centers, um, which really do a really good job of helping those small companies really kind of get their feet on the ground and learn how to move from an idea to an actual business. Um, supporting tech transfers from their universities to say that universities who have research ideas that could go to market, giving them uh, resources to help move those out of the labs and into the market. And then helping uh, venture capital, angel investors, what we call them, um, with some tax credits to say if you invest in a small Colorado company who's trying to start up, you can get some tax credit for doing those investments. And it's a program that actually was going on for a while showed really good results, and then the funding got cut. So we're going to try and put some more funding into that. Um, so really our focus is on small business, startup, entrepreneurship, and how we kind of build that engine of economic development so that we can, if we can start those companies growing here, we won't have to worry about those companies outsourcing. They're going to create and grow and get a more sustainable economic recovery here. The second issue, and I won't talk long about it because Senator Stedman can probably do a better job on the budget, uh, you know, one of the only real constitutional requirement we have is to pass a balanced budget. And so we are going to work to balance a budget in a responsible way that actually meets the needs that the people have in this state instead of the rhetoric of either party. Um, you know, the biggest issues, education. Um, for those who've heard about the Lobato lawsuit, which the state lo lost in district court, said that we weren't adequately funding um, are and living up to our constitutional requirements on K-12 education. So the governor had proposed cutting $89 million from education again this year. That's over, this would be the third, fourth year actually we've seen cuts in education. Um, with the increased revenue we saw in December, he's taken that away. 
and House Democrats are going to support him. I think all Democrats are going to support him and say, we don't want to see any cuts to K-12. And if we do have more money, what we want to start to see at least putting the money back to help fund the increase in the number of students. Because we have to remember, even though it's not a decrease in total dollars, there's still an increase in number of students, which means each student's getting less dollars to spend. So it's, you can have rhetoric on if it's a cut or not, but uh, it does mean less, less dollars per student in the classrooms. Um, the Medicaid budget, we, you know, Medicaid is a growing issue uh, in our budget. It's, you know, we've seen, I think it's a 90 or 50, or what was, what's the increase over the last? 40% increase since 2007 in our caseload. And almost all of that is due to people who've been suffering down because of the economic downturn. So if people get less, you know, they move into poverty, they're eligible, thus the state has to spend that money. So we are working on practical solutions to try and figure out how we actually align payment systems, move to an idea of global payment where we can actually pay for outcomes versus pay for services. Um, but what we won't do and what the, you know, the Republicans want us to do is say, we're going to go and get a waiver from the feds and say, we can change eligibility criteria. So we can cut, you know, in, most of the key people on Medicaid are low, uh, low income families, especially kids. Over half the people are kids. So, you know, if we cut eligibility, we're cutting kids or we're cutting seniors or we're cutting the disabled. And we don't want to do that because those people need those supports. We're going to try and make the system actually better, more efficient, and try and bend that cost curve down without hurting the people who are seeing those programs. Um, the last piece that the Democratic, Democratic House Caucus is working on is around transparency and accountability for what we call tax expenditures or tax incentives. We give roughly $2 billion as a state in tax expenditures or tax incentives to companies, to individuals. Uh, some of these make perfect sense. Some of them, I would argue, don't make sense. And trying to say what's working, just because we did it 20 years ago doesn't mean it's working today. We need to reevaluate those. And if they're not return, getting the best return on investment, let's either reform them to increase the return on investment or get rid of them and put those monies in other economic development areas that will get us higher return on investment. Best example is enterprise zones. Enterprise zones, we encourage people to come to areas and give them credits to invest in areas. Um, now, they don't get reviewed. You know, so I have a bill actually to say you have to review them every five years because you would hope that if you're giving people an incentive to move there, after a certain period of time, people actually move there and it's a desirable place to be, so you don't need to give incentive anymore. Uh, Lodo, for a while, was an enterprise zone. It's not anymore, most of Lodo. Um, but it was even when it still was a desirable place to be. Um, when, you know, when it was not, it made sense, but we really need to review those on a more regular basis. So trying to make sure we're getting the best return on our investment. So that's kind of the overarching agenda. The things I'm working on, I mentioned one of my bills, the tech transfer bill. Um, I also mentioned um, the enterprise zone five-year review. And we all get five bills that, we're gonna, that we get to work on. Um, I'm working on personnel reform. This is a huge bill that probably, if, if passed, will go to the ballot. Um, be on the ballot in 2012 to change and modernize some of our personnel systems. And I'm working with the governor's office um, and interested parties, including state workers, to figure out how we reform this system to actually make it better both for managers and workers, because it just it needs to be updated. So working on that, uh, working on a bill with a Republican, Tom Massey, around film incentives and really trying, we have a, a, a film industry in Colorado and really trying to make sure it works and we're giving the right incentives, not just handouts, but really showing that we're going to give some loan guarantees that actually will bring more money in and allow us to give incentives for films. And we're not talking the big blockbusters, but more independent films uh, to come and produce their work here. Um, so those are four of my bills. I can't, of course, remember the fifth. And I probably will have a couple Senate bills that will come over that I will deal with, but I will turn it. We'll, we'll let the lady go first. So if you'd like to talk about your Senate bills, you know what we're doing there.